another tutorial with Mandy Rosen. Unfortunately, I don't have an assistant, so I brought a stool with me to the beach to tie my rope against, so it was easier to take a picture of the rope. Right now, I'm going to File, Automate, Photo Merge. And I'm going to Photo Merge because this picture is an expansion, so to create the background composite, I took several pictures like a panoramic that I'm stitching together right now on Photoshop. And Photo Merge is a really great tool. You can see that it does the panoramic really, really quickly. So the next step is to crop the picture now that I have my expansion in place. And I'm going to expand the canvas and I'm going to make the picture a lot larger because I want a lot more sky in the picture because I'm going to place my subject in the sky. So, and here are all the layers being clicked on and off, all the different pictures I took of the background composite. Now I'm going to take the clone tool and quickly just fill in the white gaps around the picture and just fill in the sky with the clone tool. And now we have the background composite totally in place and now I can print my image super large and have a smaller depth of field, which is an advantage to doing expansions. So now I'm going to bring my subject onto the main picture by using the lasso selection tool and I'm going to copy and paste that selection onto the main picture. And I'm just going to drag that up and put my subject in place. And I also took a picture of me jumping and pointing my feet. So I'm going to copy and select that using the quick selection tool. And I'm going to copy and paste that selection onto the main image. And you can tell that my feet and my legs appear a lot larger than my body. So to compensate, I'm going to make my body selection a lot larger by hitting Command T on my Mac keyboard and holding the Shift button as I stretch out the corners of the box. And then I'm just going to hit V on my keyboard to bring up the Move tool and just move my subject in place. And now that we've done that, it's time to use the lasso selection tool to make a selection around the umbrella. And I'm going to copy and paste that onto the main image, just like I just did with my body and my face. So I'm going to do a pretty careful job around the rope, because I want a little piece of that rope to be in the main picture. And I'm just going to put that in place. I actually ended up moving the umbrellas a lot closer together as the picture progresses, which I'll get to later on, because I thought they were a little bit spaced apart. I'm also going to bring up my curves tool and brighten up the umbrella so that the sky in the background of the umbrella matches up with the background of the main picture. And then after I've created my layer mask and erased away from what I don't want to appear in the layer, I'm going to hit Control copy Control paste to bring up another umbrella layer. My dress is also looking a little flat, so I'm going to take the detail of the dress from a different picture, copy and paste that onto the main picture, move that selection in place, and then I'm going to transform the selection by hitting Command T on my Mac keyboard, then create a layer mask and erase away from the layer where I don't want it to appear and with a very hard brush I'm going to outline the selection with the paintbrush tool with black on top as you can see in the bottom left hand corner black is on top and I'm just erasing away. And now I'm bringing in the rope selection onto the main picture. I'm just using the quick selection tool to do that which I love to use because it just kind of snaps to the outlines of the selection that you're doing. And I'm going to bring that in place. I realize the rope is a little low for me, so I'm going to bring everything higher. I'm going to bring the rope higher and my legs higher and my overall body higher because I just think it looks better in the open space of the sky versus I would kind of blend in a little too much if my body and the rope was against the ocean. So I'm just bringing that into the sky. And now I'm going to my canvas size and I'm going to create more space on top of the picture to create room for the umbrella and I'm just going to Photoshop in the sky from a different picture onto the main image in a little bit to fill up those white gaps. Right now I just duplicated the layer of the rope because I want to obviously extend the rope to the umbrella and I'm just kind of messing around with that layer. I'm transforming it and angling it um, so that it matches up and then I'm going to create my layer mask and erase away from the rope with black on top to erase away. Since the two umbrellas are the same exact layer, it's going to be easy to match up the rope on the other side as well. I'm just going to do the same steps that I did. And now it's time to clean up the image a little bit more and really bring the composite together. 
So I'm using my polygonal selection tool to create a selection around my body. And then I'm painting with black on top over white, as you can see in the bottom left left hand corner of the screen. And I'm painting away with my paintbrush tool. Now I'm going to use my lasso selection tool, which I use for small little gaps like in between my dress and my arm. And I'm going to create a selection there, erase away. I'm also going to go in with a medium size paintbrush and erase away at the lines of the layers so that they blend in really well together. And remember the larger the brush is, the better your lines are going to blend together. It's the same thing when you're doing fabric pictures and making long dresses. The bigger the brush is, the better the lines will blend together. To fill in the white gaps in the sky on the main picture, I'm bringing up a different picture where there was no people in it and I just selected the sky from that picture. I'm going to transform the selection by hitting Command T on my Mac keyboard and then I'm going to stretch out this selection to the right really far and also down pretty far. And then I'm going to hit Enter, then hit Create my layer mask and then erase away at the layer where I don't want it to appear. And I'm going to hit X on my keyboard to bring white on top just to paint in that little white mark on the very top of the picture. Now that the entire composite is in place, to review, I'm clicking all the layers on and off. I'm also going to get rid of the pier and the fence in the background by creating a selection. And that selection tool that I'm using is a polygonal selection tool. And once I have the marching ants in place, I'm going to redefine the edge a little bit to make it smooth. Then I'm going to go in with the clone tool and not cloning too close together, cloning it kind of far away. And I'm just going to erase all that nasty, ugly stuff just by using the, cl the amazing clone tool. And once I've done that, I'm going to go in with the clone tool again because sometimes the polygonal selection kind of leaves these little marks, these little lines. So I'm just going to go in and fix that. Just to add some detail to the picture, I'm going to bring in a different picture where the water was actually rippling in the background. And I'm going to use my curves tool to brighten that selection up so that it blends in a little bit better with the background. Then create my layer mask and with a really soft brush, paint away from the edges of the selection. And you can see that's starting to blend together really well. And I'm even going to go in with the rocks and perfect the layer selection around the, the rocks. I'm going to paint in, paint away, paint in, paint away. The next step is to use a liquify tool because I like to thin my arms and pictures, not because I feel like I need to be thinner, but I like the contours of the lines to be beautiful and painterly like. I'm also going to do it on my head just to round it out a little bit more so it looks more like a painting and more just like a well proportioned person I guess you could say. I'm also going to use a liquify tool on the feather a little bit to make it a little more elongated and longer. Now I'm using the saturation tool. I'm just adding more saturation and more vibrance to the overall photograph. Then I'm going to go in at a 50% brush with black on top to erase away so that my skin isn't super saturated. And now that the umbrellas appear a little too far apart from me, I'm going to bring them closer together. And I'm doing that by using the lasso selection tool and drawing a circle around the umbrellas that I want to move, then hitting control copy, then hitting control paste and moving the umbrellas in place. Then I'm going to create a layer mask on each layer and erase away where I don't want the layer to appear and I'm just going to get rid of the umbrellas in the background. I'm also using the clone tool to get rid of my hands that were holding the steel part of the umbrella so that's not showing. And then I'm going to go in with the clone tool and just get rid of the last umbrella in the background. Again, I'm not cloning too close together. I'm cloning far away because otherwise that happens where you start to clone stuff you don't want to. And now I want to add rain to the picture. So I just created a background copy layer and I also created a new layer, layer number one. On layer number one, I'm going to hit alt and delete to make layer number one black. Then I'm going to go to pixelate and pontalize. And that's going to bring up these bubble looking things. The bigger the bubbles are, the longer and bigger your raindrops are going to be in your picture. So I made mine to about 66 pretty large. Then I'm going to go to Image, Adjustments, and Threshold. 
And I'm going to mess around with the settings there. I believe I go to about 245. Yeah, about 245. And then I'm going to hit enter. And then I'm going to change the blending mode to a screen mode. And that's what it looks like. And after that, I'm going to go to filter, blur, motion, blur. And now it's starting to look a lot more like rain. So with the motion blur, I go to about 500, 470 is my setting. And I'm going to create a layer mask on layer number one. And I'm going to reduce my paintbrush tool to 50% on opacity and flow. And I'm just going to go in and erase some of the rain from the sand and also from my body. Kind of like textures, it's a similar process. And I'm just going to erase away from my dress, from my face, from my arms, so that the rain isn't super heavy on my skin. And once again, I'm going to bring up my Vibrance and Saturation tool and just add more saturation. Then it's my one of my favorite parts is where I bring the picture into Visco, V-S-C-O in Lightroom, and I add some filters and edit the colors and tones in Visco. Right now I just made the blues a little bit more blue and I'm also adding a couple different filters and adding a vignette and that really makes a big difference. That's the before, this is the before and that's the after of Visco. Before, after. And now it's time for my selective color adjustment layers. So I'm on the cyans right now and I just added more cyan to the cyans and you can see that made a beautiful amazing big difference. And then the next step is to go to my black colors and add more cyan to the blacks so the picture isn't so red looking. Now I want to reduce the noise of my skin, so I'm just selecting my skin with the lasso selection tool. Notice I created a new background copy layer. Then I'm going to go to filter, noise, reduce noise, and look at my settings. It's very strong, the noise reduction, my settings. And what I would do is... Um, add like three to four maybe five layers of noise reduction then erase it all entirely from the photo then paint it back in which is what I'm doing right now I'm painting back in the noise reduction after I erased it and after the whole composite is in place and all the color tones are fixed up the very last step is to add textures so I'm not going to add too much texture because there's a lot of rain in the background and that really adds a nice texture. So I'm just going to use this one texture. I'm using soft light as a blending mode. And you can see I was just clicking that layer on and off so you can see the difference of the texture. And I'm going to go in with a 50% brush on opacity and flow and just erase away from some of the texture from my skin. Now we're at the final image. So this is what the final image looks like. And I really love how it turned out. I feel like I've been having a little bit of a photo block lately. If you've been following me on Facebook, I've been talking about it. It's been really frustrating. But I took this picture today and I feel like that's helping me get out of my block and some of the other pictures that I took today that I can't wait to edit. If you found this video interesting or helpful in any way, please subscribe to my channel and chat with me in the comments. Thank you again so much and I'll see you guys next time.